This is a brief introduction to the father of microbiology, Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Anton van Leeuwenhoek was a Dutch tradesman and scientist. He is best known for his work on the development and improvement of the microscope, and also for his subsequent contribution towards the study of microbiology. Born in Delft, a town in the Netherlands, on October the twenty fourth, sixteen thirty two, he was the son of a basket maker. At the age of sixteen, he secured an apprenticeship with a cloth merchant in Amsterdam as a bookkeeper and cashier. There. He saw his first simple microscope, a simple magnifying glass mounted on a small stand, as used by cloth merchants of the time. After a short period, he had acquired one of these for his own use. In 1654, he returned to his hometown, where he started his own successful drapery business. Though it was to be his interest in microscopes and a familiarity with glass processing that would lead to the significant discoveries he would later make. Lewin Hoek was an unlikely scientist, since he came from a family of tradesmen, had no fortune, and received no higher education or university degrees. He hardly had any training in science, but developed a remarkable aptitude in making powerful biconvex lenses by grinding good quality glass. With skill and diligence, he succeeded in making some of the most important discoveries in the history of biology, and is considered as the father of microbiology. Using his handcrafted microscopes, he was the first to see and describe single-celled organisms, which he originally referred to as animalcules, and which we now refer to as microorganisms. He was also the first to record microscopic observations of muscle fibers, bacteria, sperm, and blood flow in small blood vessels. He looked at protozoa in rainwater, pond water, and well water. He also looked at bacteria in the human mouth and intestine. In 1677, he first described the sperm of insects, dogs, and humans. These observations laid the foundations for the sciences of bacteriology and protozoology. He did not write books, but instead communicated his observations by sending letters to the Royal Society in London. The letters were published in the Royal Society's journal, the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society. His achievements were given due recognition during his life, and he was honored by a fellowship of the Royal Society. He continued his scientific pursuits till his death at the age of ninety-one. In comparison to a modern microscope, Van Leeuwenhoek's design is extremely simple, using a single lens mounted in a tiny hole in a brass plate that makes up the body of the instrument. The specimen was then mounted on a sharp point that sticks up in front of the lens. And its position and focus could be adjusted by turning the two screws. The entire instrument was only three to four inches long and had to be held up close to the eye, and required good lighting and great patience to use. He used the lens to inspect cloth fibers. He also used these lenses to construct many very simple-looking microscopes, which had hardly any similarities with the present-day microscopes. But his instruments were powerful enough to magnify small objects by two hundred times or even more, whilst the compound microscopes, even though being much more similar in design to modern microscopes, only had a magnification of twenty or thirty times. His microscopes consisted of a single biconvex lens, which was fitted between two metal plates. Hope you learned something today, and thank you for watching this video.